So we're going to get this thing popping. Some things circulating right now, social media. So you know how I do it. You know what I say. Thank you for joining the live. Thanks for coming to Wolfpack Performance Performance Talk Podcast and home of F1 Minute, the hottest live talk show on the planet for Formula One content. Big shout out to Andre Lee for the super stick. I really appreciate that. We're going to talk about some things. <clears throat> We're going to have some conversations. We're going to talk. And another thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, I'm going to open that gate. I'm going to open that floodgate for, you know what I'm saying, for, for anybody to have combat, debate, talk about this next F1 Minute, Monday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But there seems to be some notion like floating around, not even a notion, some people are experiencing about people saying that Lewis Hamilton is indeed exaggerating not only his experience with racial encounters, but people are going as far to say that he's exaggerating about what people of color, black people, people of African descent are going through as far as racism. Now, I know, and I went and I looked and I checked to see how many platforms would talk about this, and it ain't many, if any at all. I know the main big platforms, not at all. Often when these situations occur, they don't, they're very quiet. They go, they go right over them. Well, this channel doesn't do that for several reasons, because I'm not going to let it go without it being unchecked. And it's something that's real, and people would like for us to think that it's not real. And when I say us, I'm not just talking about people brown skin, black skin. I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about all of us. All of us here that are human beings that respect and love each other for being so, that debate and talk about Formula One without worrying about the color of each other's skin, I'm talking about us. They want us to seem like this stuff is not real. They want us to buy the whole thing when they put out the quote, it's the race card. That picture right there, that's not a race card. That's racist. All right. Not only was it racist, it was homophobic. So I'm going to speak to Lewis Hamilton talking about kids going through or experiencing racism at some point in their life. I experienced racism in the elementary school that soon, that early. All right. I was called the N word. I'm just going to say it. I was called a nigger. I was called a black monkey and I was called blackie. And I fought in every one of those situations. Every one of those situations. Because I knew it wasn't right. Sometimes kids these days, when they first run into it, and it's because I, I try to do a bit different than what it was when I was coming through. Because when I was coming through, it was already known, and I was talked to about uh, police. I was talked to about what racism was. You know, I was shown what it was. I was shown bodies lynched and hanging from trees. I was shown cars were burned. I was shown that cities. Our, our individual communities were, were ravaged through. I was shown the Little Rock Nine. I was shown all these things. So when I encountered racism, I automatically had a feeling and notion about it and combated it. So for anybody to say that it is exaggerated about what Lewis Hamilton said about a kid of African descent, a black kid experiencing racism, at some point in time, it's not false. Just a few weeks ago, my daughter, 10 years old, came home and asked me why would somebody call her a black monkey? Why would somebody call her a black monkey? 10 years old. So you know what I know? I know the kid that did this really isn't racist. But the person he learned that from, he or she, he learned that from is likely racist. And they're using that language in, around, and during that kid's presence. And that kid sees that that language is being used when they see a certain image on TV or when they're talking about a certain demographic of people. So now that kid comes to school and uses that language against my daughter and other people that look like her. But I'm going to tell you this. That father didn't want to show up not one time to discuss with me at school why his son would come here and call kids something as racial and hateful as that. Why you didn't want to show up. You, you, you must be doing a lot, but you didn't want to show up. It's not exaggerated what Lewis Hamilton is talking about. It's not exaggerated about what Lewis Hamilton is going through. It's not exaggerated about racism in sports. And you know what you always hear? You want to know the coin flip? 
when racism happens in sports, what do some people say? Oh, politics don't belong in sports. You know what? I don't hear I don't hear those same people loud. I don't hear them as loud. Why don't you say racism doesn't belong in sports? Why don't they say that? How often have you heard them say that? The same people that will try to come and say politics don't belong in sports. How often have you heard those same people identify and say racism doesn't belong in sports? We just got done listening to Lewis Hamilton talk about Vinicius Jr. in football being shouted out what? Monkey. Monkey. We just looking at this image right here. Lewis Hamilton, Spain, blackface. Security guards laughed at that. People thought that was okay. Only black driver in Formula One, you're going to have a group of people show up to a GP and blackface taunting Lewis Hamilton. But that's a race card? That's politics? Nah. That's hatred. And what I am talking about is combating hatred with love and care for people, not color. You got a Red Bull employee thinks it's okay to use racial terms against Lewis Hamilton. You got somebody that was fired. That's what you're you going to see. This is what's going on. And it's still going on. And it cracks me up that people want to say Lewis Hamilton is exaggerating. He's some kumbaya hippie. He just, he just always want to fight a good fight. He wouldn't be fighting if there wasn't anything to fight for. He wouldn't be able to fight if there wasn't anything to fight against. The fact is racism is real. It's in Formula One. It's in sport and it exists in our world and around us. The only difference is there are people like you that don't accept it and you combat it yourself. You think I'm just talking? No, I'm talking to you. It's because of you that my platform is where it is. It's because of you. Because you don't hate everybody. You don't hate people. You don't, you don't not like people because of the skin or color. It's because of you, and it is you that I applaud. It is you that I appreciate. It is you that I love that have come to this platform and understood that it is a person, and he is a person, and he has every right to talk about Formula One. And sometimes I agree with him, sometimes I don't, but I love it because it's always different. It's because of you that you are not racist and that you take me for who I am and what I will be. And you're not judging me by the color of my skin or the descent from which I come from. And I thank you for that. But everybody else who came to this channel when it started and you told me I wasn't going to be shit. You told me I wasn't going to be nothing. You told me to go back to my own country. You told me to stick to NASCAR. You called me a black word. You called me an N word. You called me all. I'm still here. And I thank you too. I thank you too. Because you know what? It only made me stronger. And it only let people really see it's real out here. Paul blows my mind that people are thought to be black faced. Garbage was funny. It's a sad world. Peace and love. My family, Paul, big shout out and peace of love to you too, brother. What's really sad is security guards. When those people are in their way on their way inside the GP thought it was funny. Let it be a matter of fact. Listen, I got a video. Sylvia Wick Kelly. I'm sorry the little one and anyone has to go through that character, not color. That's right. Character over color. Those haters will always stay ignorant unless we have people who bring it to the forefront of society. And people get mad when we do it. You want to know why? Because in back rooms, they doing the same thing. Or you know what? They know somebody and love somebody that's that way, and they don't want it to be called out. There goes a tweet right there that Mercedes should have used when they did the mean tweets. That's a real tweet that was recent. It's, it's just fresh this month. Just fresh this month. Name a nigger. That's what did you see right there. This is something that should not be allowed. This is something that shouldn't be tolerated. And I don't see enough drivers and our people in the sport speaking up and bringing it to the forefront that we will not tolerate it. You will never be able to buy another Formula One ticket if we catch, see you using hateful words, speech against drivers or anybody else that is within the Formula One ecosystem or period. We won't allow you in here. I don't see that type of I don't see that type of commitment. I don't see it. And you know something else that Lewis Hamilton said that was very funny. That was in that documentary is the fact that when he started winning, it got worse. Oh, it's okay for you to be a black kid here and not win. You could be a black kid cart and don't win. That's fine. Matter of fact, we might still talk about you, we might still use some racial epithets, but you know what? It won't be as bad. It won't last as long. But I be damned. Lewis Hamilton winning? 
and being black, oh, it was a problem. It's factual it was a problem. These little mean tweets are nothing. Like, like honestly, these tweets that people used, it's true. A condo, what's going on? Let them in the gate wearing that says that these tracks okay with racism and most likely support. And that, thank you, very factual, likely supported. They laughed at it. Security guards laughed as they came in like it was funny. But I'm just being real. These tweets that Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes let out, like these are tweets where it could be anybody. Okay, like uh, plenty of drivers go through this, right? Plenty of drivers go through situations like this. Could there be some racial undertones there? Maybe, but you can't even tell about a tweet, so you can't even say that. You just say that they don't like Lewis Hamilton. They talking trash about him or using little words like that. Same way we do a crash TV, uh, max crash tapping, cost cap tapping, all of that stuff. None of that's racial. It's all attached to situations that are in Formula One. It's attached to their driving styles. Crash TV, that's not racial. Dude crashed a lot. Look, Crash, he's starting to get a nickname. He crashed a lot. None of that's racial. Crash Stappin, Mad Max, Maxi Pad, none of that's racial. <laughs> Nobody can say that I've used racism against any other driver. So let me ask you this or anybody. <laughs> I'm not racist. It's just a fact. But wait a minute. What's even more funny about this is this. Here's this video that I was going to show on F1 Minute, but I deleted the audio because I didn't want to risk the show. All right. I didn't want to risk the show being taken down or tagged or flagged. Kurt Hamilton says they banned the Confederate flag from NASCAR. Supposedly a less. Thank you. They banned the flag. Right. And it was due to who? Bubba. Darren Wallace. The, really the only black driver. Here we go again. The only black driver in this series. And what does he find one day? A noose in the garage. What do they say? It's, it's been there. It's a garage pool. Let me tell you all something. Why out of all those garages, that was the only garage pool like that? On top of that, I want you to know something. You don't get to pick your garage when you go to NASCAR. It's assigned to you. So you're telling me out of 40-something plus cars, the one black driver happens to get the garage that's got a noose-like tied supposed garage pool to it. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you something about the functionality of a noose and why it would be dumb as hell to make it a garage pool. A noose is a rope tied in the device type where really when the weight hangs into it, it tightens and singes down on the neck or what's ever in that loophole. So if somebody was going to make a noose a garage pool, in fact, when you pull that garage, that rope will want to singe down on your hand causing a safety risk. That's, that's BS. Stop playing with me. And Bubba Wallace gets so much scrutiny and criticism, yet there's 20, 30 other drivers behind him. They ain't doing a damn thing. They banned the Confederate flag. Why did they have a problem with that? So many people had a problem with them banning a Confederate. You lost. The Confederacy lost. It's not even a reason to hang that flag anywhere in America. The Union won. The Confederacy lost. You don't hang that flag. People hang it because they want to support something that the Confederates supported, which was slavery, the oppression of black individuals of African descent to stay being raped, mutilated, ridiculed, non-educated, really realize they made it illegal for people that look like me to read and write. What sense does that make? Unless you're racist, unless you want to keep down a group of people. Can't believe in 2023 racism is ever present. Big, big shout out to Mary Beanie. Sad fact is it will never go away. There is enough vile and disgusting people in the world. So sad. She's right. It never will go away. But everybody or somebody could do it could go away, but it won't. It won't. Like you don't you people are not listening to history in in the in the the disgusting things that were done to people that look like me, like literally they bred us like animals so that they can have machines to put in the field. They forced us, forced my ancestors to have sex with each other, even though family members, so that they felt that they would have a good breed line like dogs. Tied us in the bottom of ships, in our own bile, in our own feces, in our own piss, 
for weeks and weeks, dying off it, how insurance came along, still paying on those dead it arrived. The stock market came along. Black people running across here. You want to buy them? Selling people off. Nothing is good about the N-word. That's why I don't use it. I don't care for the music. I know, and you know what's funny? People are always going to try to use the coin flip. Why I'm white, I should be able to say the N-word. Why? Well, y'all say it in music. First of all, I don't say it in any music that I've made. Go listen to my music. I don't use the N-word. I don't like it. And I don't like it when it's used in other music. This is true. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't try to make it like it's the same thing because it's not. Is it good to use? Hell no. And I call it out when I see it. I don't like it. But you know what? When women talk to each other, they use the B word. You think I'm going to call a woman a B word? I don't even like to say the word. You think I'm going to call a woman? B? No. You think she's going to take it the same? If I call her a B word and her girlfriend call her a B word? No. So stop trying to act like it's the same and stop trying to use that lame excuse for you to try to justify why racism should be allowed. Kirk Hamilton, it's going to keep happening until they see Me Too level accountability. Facts. But unfortunately, like weaponized and exploited too, look up Sean Okamon. Okay, bet. Bet. The mechanic, Big Bro Wolf, I stopped caring about what other races think of me. The better I became. That, that, that also can help you. The less I care. Their hate doesn't pay my bills or put food on my table. Alone I came, alone I should go. Laugh out loud. That, hey, that, that, could be, that could be a very true way on how you could change your perspective on life to combat and shield yourself from it. But also the truth is there are a lot of lives that it does affect. Let me ask you this. My daughter come home at 10, somebody calling her a black monkey. You don't think you don't think if I don't have the proper education to reinforce her mental ability, her mental health, that that can't affect her? Yeah, it could. Imagine if she kept going to school, not with the reinforcement of me and not with the reinforcement. And every time she went to school, they kept allowing her to be picked on and called that. They kept allowing a kid to be picked on and called that. That's going to have some effect. I won't trust me. I won't allow it. It ain't happening right now. You, you better be damn sure. He might didn't show up, but he got the message. Got, trust me, he got a strong message. Because I'm going to tell you what, at some point in time, if you feel like your kid and you're supporting that your kid can come to school and do that, it's not going to be long before you're going to receive an ass whipping for the actions of your kid because you are indeed the source of why this kid is coming out here doing that. Kids are not racist. Kids are not born into the world racist. It's a learned habit. It's an enforced mental conditioning that somebody who is mentally already sick, who is already racist, that hates other generations and hates other people because of their skin color, they're teaching and grooming these kids to be like them. But they don't want to come outside and admit it. Not all of them. Some of them do. And I got to credit them when they do. At least I know who you are. So I'm going to play this video. All right. So you can see what I'm talking about. This was another tweet on, on Twitter, another social media post. Now, I'm about to play this so you can hear what this is saying. Alabama nigger and I want to be free. Hell to the NAACP. Alabama nigger and I want to be free. Hell to the NAACP. That right there. This reached the A. This is saying an Alabama N-word and I want to be free. Hail to the NAACP. Somebody did all this work to take Lewis Hamilton's image in AI and have him singing a song such as that. Calling himself an Alabama N-word, not even from Alabama. That's how hate, that's how hate, that's, that's how much hate people got in their heart. And you know what? Some of these people come here to this channel. Some of these people come here and flood the comment section. Some of those people come here, flood the live chat. Some of these people subscribe to the channel just so they can come in and say something hateful. It's not fake. It's real. He's not exaggerating. It's happening. I was fortunate enough to meet one of my little, little, oh, for real, Little Rock Nine when I was younger. And it was shocking to hear how little it changed in the institutional level from Jim Crow South to the early 2000s. Listen. My dad took me to a town he lived in. And you know what? It's, it's funny. It is funny. Yo, I, I've already shown y'all a picture of me and my dad together before. Most people probably wouldn't even realize. Probably wouldn't even know. They'd probably be like, what? But anyway, my dad took me uh, to a town that one of his friends was born in. All right? He was in the Navy. Greg served in the Navy. Went back there. 
there was a pool back in those times that they had. All right. And when seg- desegregation come along, the black families were able to go to the pool. Now, let me tell you what white, some white families did, not all some. They decided that if they were going to have to share a pool with black kids, that nobody would be able to use the pool. So you know what they did And this place is not even two hours away from here. They concreted the pool up overnight, pour concrete in it and slabbed it up. That's how bad it is. Because matter of fact, do y'all remember the video that came out with the white guys antagonizing and assaulting the black kids because they wanted to get in the swimming pool? That's this year. That's this year. Black kids having to fight grown adult white males because they don't think they should be allowed to get into a swimming pool. That's this year. Are you serious? Matter of fact, I tell you what. Do y'all remember the racial outburst that Christian Horner, you excited it. You got to take responsibility for what you did. When the contact between Lewis and Max Verstappen and Silverstone happened, Y'all remember the racial outburst that took place, the racial attacks that happened toward Lewis? But wait a minute. Why didn't we see that same level of racial attacks when George Russell made contact with Joe, sending him into the barriers? That was one of the worst accidents we've probably seen since Groshan. Did anybody remember George Russell going under racial attacks? Anybody? I don't. Matter of fact, did anybody remember since Gasly made contact with Russell, which caused Russell to make contact with Joe? Anybody recall any type of racial attacks on Gasly? I don't. I don't. As a matter of fact, I tell you what. Does anybody recall Max Verstappen going under racial attacks when he parked the Red Bull car on top of Lewis Hamilton? Anybody? I don't. I remember him getting names like Crash Stappen. I don't remember any racial attacks. And if they were, it must have been so minuscule, not that that makes it right because it's still wrong, that it couldn't even mount up to all the racial attacks that he got just in that one time. Are you serious? Are you serious? But you know what? You'll have dumbasses coming to talk about it ain't real, coming to talk about it's fake. No, listen, you always got some batter. You always got some type of counterfeit going on in anything, but this is real. It's really real. And you know what? Listen, this is funny. Don't worry about it. Darren, the dude Darius, you see right here? His ass will never show up to F1 Minute to put his face with anything he just got deleted. Guaranteed. He's never shown up to F1 Minute when invited. When people like him are invited to come to F1 Minute, and talk or say how they feel, he don't show up, they don't show up, they never show up because they always want their face hid or they want to hide behind their keyboard, just like I've proved several times after time after time. And that's the same way the KKK act. That's why they wear the white sheets, because they don't want you to see their face. They don't want to put a face with the horrible, shameful acts that they commit out here because, indeed, they know they're cowards. They are cowards. I'm going to tell you just like that. And this is how I know he's still in the chat and he's listening, right? He's not even commenting. He's still in the chat and he's listening because I wouldn't be able to tag you if you still weren't here. Stop playing with me, man. I know you're weak. And others like you are weak. But you don't have to be. Yuri Vips using the N-word. And I'm going to tell you something about the Yuri Vips situation. See, this is where I can, I can, I can not just want to go out and just bash somebody. Yuri Vips indeed is wrong for using the N-word while he was gaming. But more so than anything, I got to blame those people who are his friends, regardless of what color they are, what nationality they are, for allowing him to think that it's okay. I'm going to tell you right now, no friend of mine, Regardless of what they are, they know you better not call me the N-word. And on top of that, if you use it, I'm, a, I'm correcting you ASAP. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you do that? Why would you say something like that? Why would you think that that's okay to use that word? For real. And let's not be limits. Let's not act like we're going to jump off a bridge because everybody else jumps off and say, oh, well, I heard it in the song. You thought it was okay to say? 
You thought it was okay for you to say that word. You did. Stop playing with me. Big shout out to Sylvia Kelly. She says he has no balls, just all mouth. That's a fact. That's a fact. That is a big fact. And it's okay. And you know what? You see right now, I still didn't go time him out. Somebody gave you good advice, bro. They told you to sit out. Nah, trust me, if he was gone, I wouldn't be able to tag him. If he was gone when I just tagged him, I wouldn't be able to tag him. All he's doing, he's just being quiet. Mary Beanie, that's it. He's not gone. He's just being quiet. Unless you're in the live chat, you can't be tagged. I can't tag somebody that's, in the, that's not in the live chat. Like right now, I'm trying to tag Racer X210 or other mod. He's even a mod. I can't tag him. If I tagged you, you're still in the live chat. If I tagged you, you're still in the live chat. He not, he's not gone. He just shut the fuck up. That's all. That's all. But it's okay. I'll tell you like this. Lewis Hamilton has been going through this for a minute, right? And what else did he mention? He mentioned about people telling him to go back to his country. They're, they're, they're namely talking about Africa. You telling Lewis Hamilton, who wasn't born in Africa, to go back to his country. I've had that told to me several times. Go back to your country. Go back to where you come from. Look, I was born in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. Seven times out of ten, when I've had conversations that are in this same genre, maybe not as aggressive, maybe not as, like, acute to this, and then I ask this person to have the negative words or negative thoughts about people that look like me. And I ask him, I say, well, let me ask you something. Since you're so country, man, since, you, since you're such a patriot, since you're so about telling me to go back to a country I've never been to, have you served this country that you're claiming? Have you served the United States of America in order to protect even the people in it? You know what they usually say? No. Then what the f are you talking about? And who the hell are you talking to? I stood up and took that right. I stood up and took that action. I served my country to protect your ass and people in it. But you're supposed to be the patriot. And yet you never donned the colors of America on any uniform in your life. You never stood in ranks with brothers and sisters that were marching to do the same. Ever. But you're supposed to be the patriot. This is supposed to be your country, though. But you never told that line. Weak. Paul says, grow some balls and speak up. Don't hide behind a screen. Big facts. Listen, y'all know what happened when I invited all of them. I made a, I made a short. I invited all of them to come to F1 Minute. How many of them showed up to put their face on camera? But you know what? They was in the live chat. They waited till it was over, got in the comment section. These are the actions of cowards. And everybody that is racist, that has made these texts, that have made these tweets, they are also cowards. Because I'm pretty sure at least nine times out of ten, they would not say these things verbally in person to Lewis's face, my face, or your face. That's why I tell y'all, y'all think I'm, people don't think I'm playing. When I say I love y'all and appreciate y'all, y'all really don't know how much. To show the rest of the world YouTube, Formula One, that there are a community of people who are not about the bullshit. Who are about character and building with human beings. I appreciate y'all that damn much. You just don't know because you all are proof that that is not the norm. You all are proof that that is not okay. You all are proof that everybody is not that way. You all are proof that I am okay and you accept me for who I am regardless. You all are proof. That there is always and should always be a better force to fight against the negative and that there is place for love in whatever we do. You all prove that. Kirk Hamilton, same people complaining about Cap Nealon was dodging a draft back in the day. For real. Do they not know that it was a Navy SEAL that advised Cap to kneel instead of just sit? Matter of fact, do you know what one we do? One of our brothers, our sisters injured, we take a knee. The country is crippled. America is crippled. There were cases of black people being killed in the street by law enforcement agencies. 
Fat Boy Wonder, big shout out for the first super chat ever. Same, bro. Took the oath. They weak facts. You wasn't in that room with me. You wasn't in that room with me when I changed ball caps. You wasn't with next to me when I went 32 plus hours for a hell night. You wasn't next to me when I got up in the morning and I put that uniform on with that American flag on my patch. You wasn't next to me. But yet you claiming you the patriot. You claiming that this is your country. Matter of fact, listen. Politics will always be in sports. Racism will always be around us because they will always be weak and they will always be strong. There will always be a negative and a positive, but I hope one day there is more positive, so much more positive that the negative can't even withstand it. You got one person in Formula One that's black and look how much attention, look how much hate, look how much criticism, look how much jokes and bullshit he gets. One person. You don't have another driver on the grid that gets as much as Lewis Hamilton. The only other person might be Max Verstappen. After that, Alonzo, you lucky, and they ain't even close running. They just names I can throw out that I know are going to get some criticism. Based on their actions, I don't see nobody around here racially attacking them. I don't even like Max Verstappen's character. You don't see me racially attacking him. I still even credit Max Verstappen for his talents and his ability in a car, on the track. But yet, I got to come out the gun range and see a car full of white people drive by and call me the N-word. I got to go to school, elementary school, and get blasted in the face by the N-word and black fave monkey. For real? Man. Ura Navy. I see you, T. Osborne. Ura Navy. So I'm just saying, I don't care what nobody say. Anybody that subscribes to this channel, that gives me a shot, that gives me an opportunity, that may not always agree with me, but still comes to say their opinions and we can go back and forth without racially attacking each other, without personally attacking each other, I appreciate you because that's what it should be. The sport should be something to unify and bridge gaps. Official Lauren Brown, big shout out to you. You are preaching these people don't know what it is to put your life into what you say. I did not dignify that video with my view. Big shout out to you. I really appreciate that. Galagicus, hide behind white hoods because they are punks. Facts. I remember when I was in, I was in basic training. McGraw was his name. Gaston was the other soldier's name. McGraw thought it was okay to come in basic training and call Gaston the N-word. Bro, we all getting trained so that we can all work as a unit. And you come here and you think that racism going to work? Yeah, it's still racism even in the, in the military, but trust me, it ain't dealt with likely and, you know, things still exist. But do y'all remember what's up? Oh, Blue Diva. So much respect for all Armed Forces. Big shout out. Appreciate you. Do y'all remember they used, listen, it, it, this is what's crazy. And I credit my, my great uncle, my great grandfather, and my grandfather for all the work they put in on the concrete ground level. Because when they were going into the military, they were only able to get certain positions because of the color of their skin. You know what they said? You can be a cook. You can't operate machinery because, you know, black people don't see well. Oh, you can't operate that machinery because black people are not smart. Rambro 88, the fear of being outdone by someone that is supposed to be below you is shameful for them, even if it shouldn't be that way. That's a fact. Now, I'm not even talking about descended ancestors long way. I'm talking about my grandfather, my great uncle, going to fight in the Vietnam War and in the war and come home and still get spit on for being black and called the N-word, even in uniform just went to some of the worst wars this country has been in and people still think they got the right to spit on them in uniform when they come home. I just protected the home you live in. I just did things that are going to affect me mentally for the rest of my life for a country that said I got to follow orders. But I come home and you going to spit in my face? 
MF1215, big shout out your first time ever super chatting. It takes courage to speak up against uh, complacency and injustice while others remain silent. But that's what leadership is. And that's a fact. That's why I know every time I talk about this and it's in the sport, I risk people unsubscribing, people handing my channel out to damn bash it. I don't care. Because somebody really has got to do it. Somebody really has to speak up about it. Somebody really needs to use their platform to put it on the forefront so people understand and see it. Guess it's going to be me. Is it going to be something we talk about every week? No, but we're going to talk about it when it's relevant and when it comes up and when I damn well think I should. Because I ain't worried about my numbers and my views jumping out the gym. While people come here and say, man, your black ass, you only got $1,000 per thousand views per, per video. So? I don't care. That's a thousand people that said, you know what? I'll give them a shot. It's 12,000 people on this channel that said, you know what? I'll rock with them. That's all I care about. I don't care about nothing else. So what? I don't make content to be a born superstar. I do this shit because I'm passionate about it. I wake up early in the morning because I'm passionate about it. I come on live several times a week because I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about the sport of Formula One. I'm passionate about diversity. I'm passionate about meeting with my brothers and sisters from all walks of life, all type of different colors and shades. Trust me, I'm passionate about that. But you know what? They'll talk about Lewis Hamilton because he's passionate about that too. And they'll discredit him and talk negative about him because he's passionate about that too. Just like you saw a tweet that says somebody like he's a hippie. Why does he always have to be trying to fight the good fight? You mad about that? You mad about somebody that is also trying to do something positive for you too? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's sad. It really is sad. We can have a good relationship, but you would never know because you never give me the opportunity because of this. Just saying, all my battle buddies, all my people in the chat, in the live chat, big shout out to you. Official Lauren Brown, big shout out again. I subscribe because you back up what you say. The effect and sacrifice of POC point of contact are making is a consistent leadership and makes them mad. Hey, big shout out to you and I much respect and love for real. I really do appreciate that. Will I am my brother. It's always low losers that don't, that don't even take the oath to defend the Constitution, spitting hate. Facts. I did as GS-11 Department of Army Civilian. It's a damn shame. Hey, big shout out to you, my brother. And by the way, I, I love I love you, and, I, and I'm glad you did that super chat, but I ain't let you slide on that, on that rookie battle. Not one damn bit. <laughs> one bit. But we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. And listen, we in for another race week, right? We got qualifying coming up this Saturday. It ain't, it ain't all got to be bad. It don't have to rain all the time. And even if it does rain, I got an umbrella and I got you, you got me, you got her, you got him. That's how we're going to do it. Back to back, nobody can tackle us like that. But Rocco, what's going on? I see you. I see you. Fam member right there. Big shout out, okay? So we in another race week. We're about to be in Spain, y'all. We're about to be in Spain where the W14B is going to show us something. It's going to show us something. We don't know what it's going to show us, but it's going to show us something. And we're going to be looking to see what happens. But I'm going to tell you something that I do appreciate you all. I appreciate you much. Everybody, character over color, people over politics, racism does exist. Don't let people try to ploy you or try to destroy you with the racial card, quote. Don't let them try to say politics don't belong in sports, trying to cover it up because it's racism, because you never hear them say racism don't belong in sports. People are going to attack Lewis. They're going to attack you. They're going to attack this channel. They're going to attack other people that think positive and just want us to be able to converge together. All right? So stay up. Big shout out, Sylvia with Kelly. Just blessed somebody with a membership. Let's see. Oh, Kenya just got blessed with a membership. Paul says, I love this family. I love each and every one. Thank you, Jay. No, thank you, Paul. Thank you, brother, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Big facts to you. So listen, we got another race week. I'm excited. 
Come back here. You know we're going to do Wolves Den Discord. We're going to have a meet about that. We're going to talk about it after FP1, FP2, kind of see what's going on so we can kind of get, get people's opinions. It don't matter if you Red Bull. don't matter if you Mercedes, Alfa Tori, Alpine, uh, Ferrari, uh, Aston Martin. It don't matter, man. Come join the family. Will I am says Logan Sargent bringing the heat at Barcelona. We're going to see. We're going to see. I think he's bringing a bucket of ice because he's cold right now with zero. He likes sub-zero. <laughs> he's he cold right now. We're going to see. But we're going to be here live uh, for qualifying. And like I say, uh, Will, I'm going to get ready to send your $50 gift card out. My brother Will won $50 this past weekend on Kickback Quality. We do a trivia game. Come get your opportunity to win $25 or $50 gift card. Will, right now, I think my brother got over $125 so far this season already, and we're not even halfway through, all right? So we also have a new VIP member. I told y'all we're probably going to have a new VIP member. We got a new VIP member. OG Zilla was presented uh, VIP last week. I'm waiting on the shirt. Needs a double XL for you, brother, so you can be comfortable in your shirt. Uh, but we're going to be doing that again. So, yes, join us, Kickback Quality Live. Join us also on Race Day Live, all right? Join us. Have a good time. Trust me. It's like Baskin Robbins. It's going to be all types of flavors for everybody. And you know I do smack a little bit when I'm eating my honey bun for Q3, but don't mind me, all right? I'm just trying to get a little food in there. But for anybody that thought that it was okay to make this video, and if you okay with it, Alabama nigga and I want to be free. Then I got a problem with you. And you feel free to show up anytime you want to discuss that problem. All right? Because I got a bunch of brothers and sisters who are Formula One fans. They might have something to say about that too. And you're a Formula One fan too. I don't know why they try to cast you out like you're not a Formula One fan when you do racist things. You're still a Formula One fan. I don't know why people want to try to be like, oh, don't attach racial things to Max. That was a Max fan that did something racist. Look at his screen name right there. MV33 with Max profile picture even on there. And he put that up there. Max didn't do it, but his fan did it. And that's attached to Max. Max might want to start speaking out more against racism, which he don't. Why? Why not? Anybody know some type of organization that Max is doing work for, charity work for, donation work? Because Lewis Hamilton donates millions of dollars to funds and foundations to help and assist people, not just race, race, like things. I'm talking about just to help people, period. All people. But then people will have something to say because he helped black people too, right? That's the thing. Like, if black people, just help people. Don't just help black people. Like, what are you talking about? Like, stop. Come on now. This is crazy. But anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all much. Let's have a good day. All right. If it's raining, it don't rain always. False flag, big shout outs. You speak the truth. Long time member right there. False flag, what's going on with you? You don't have to let it rain forever. And if you do need something positive to be said about you, I'm going to say something positive right now. You got goals, go get them. Don't let nobody down you. Times are not always going to be good for you, but it won't always be bad. And if you need some motivation, you can comment in the chat, tag Wolfpack, when I see it on my notifications of comments I haven't answered yet, I'll drop you something positive just to support you. All right? Got backup right here. We're, believe that. All right? So we'll see y'all soon. We'll be live this week. Race Week Spain. We're going to see what the W14B going to do. We know what the RB19 going to do. It's a rocket ship. Shit fast. AMR23, we're going to see. And Alpine, I want to see if that real race pace that Esteban laid down in that quality lap to get third place in Monaco, I want to see if it's real. I want to see if it's going to happen in Spain because a lot of people talk about Lewis Hamilton wasn't going to be able to pass Alpine even if it was at Spain. We're going to see. And George Russell, pipe down. We out.